Okay, so we are recording. Hey everyone, I am here today with Shannon Fulner. She is a food stylist, and I mean, I can let her introduce herself, but um, hi Shannon, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to get to, to talk about um, my career a little bit, but uh, yeah, so my name's Shannon. I am a food stylist, a culinary producer, um, a recipe developer, you know, kind of jack of all trades, all of the above. Um, I work for, you know, the Food Network. I work for Bon Appetit, Martha Stewart. I'm freelance. So I kind of, you know, work for whoever it is that has job opportunities, you know, at a given time. Um, but yeah, so I'm based in New Jersey, New York. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a fun career. I'm excited to share a little bit more about it with all of you. Love it. Okay. And those are some big names you just dropped, like Martha Stewart, Bon Appetit, uh, Food Network. That is just like incredible. So um, maybe like bring us back to maybe like mm, a few years ago and before you started your career, like were you thinking about doing this? Like, did you see yourself doing this or how did you end up in this field? For sure. So I have always loved baking. I've been baking since I was, you know, a little kid, since I could climb up on the chair and help mix cookies. Um, so it's been something that I've, you know, enjoyed doing since childhood. Um, you know, my love work kind of grew. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to go to school for pastry. So I went to Johnson and Wales. I did a bachelor program there in baking and pastry arts. Um, and from there, I kind of, you know, decided that I wanted to work in the cake industry. So, you know, Ron Ben Israel from Sweet Genius, if any of you guys have ever seen that show, was, you know, someone who I always looked up to. I always loved his cakes. And so I really wanted to get into cake decorating. I worked for him for a little bit, um, some other cake, you know, specialty locations. Um, and then I sort of decided that I wanted to pivot, you know, I, I needed something different. I needed another challenge. And so I actually reached out to um, alumni relations at Johnson and Wales, and they helped to get me connected with someone who was already at the network as a producer. Um, so use your networks because honestly it works wonders and, you know, people genuinely want to help you. Um, and I think it's just asking for that help sometimes is the hardest, but so I asked for that, you know, help. It was something I've always kind of wanted to do. Um, I got connected and I did an internship there, you know, a full year um, internship. And then that kind of stemmed into more freelance work. Um, so yeah, it's it was kind of an interesting path, but I've always loved the Food Network. I always really knew I wanted to be there in some capacity. Um, wasn't sure that that was the path it was going to take, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun getting there. Yeah, no, that's really fun. How you, you know, didn't have a clear, you know, like you didn't have like a specific thing you wanted to do, but you just kept like leaning onto like what you're passionate about and what you loved. And I love how you like you shared about how you use your network, because honestly, like, I think that's all, all businesses. It's all about the relationships, the network, and then having the, the, the motivation and the intrinsic motivation to just reach out to people one-on-one -on -one, because those are the one those are the things that are going to get you to point from point a to point b and so um and and this all happened because you um took a uh you studied and then you used your network from your education to kind of um find your way to a food network right yeah yeah it was it was definitely that connection that really helped um you know you can set yourself up for success you know by doing the schooling that's kind of in a field that you think you want to be in and all of those things um but at the end of the day you know you need someone to help you kind of get your foot in the door yeah um, so i think that that was i'm so grateful i still i still loop back uh, to this day because honestly those people make people's careers happen which is really cool um so i think if you can ever be that person um you know, I think that's, that's awesome. That's like so rewarding too, right? Um, to be able to be like, yeah, I help this person get to their next level. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Like for, for like mindset wise, like how did you, did you ever feel like you were like not ready or not like prepared or not good enough? You know, that imposter syndrome, like how, how did you navigate through that? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so I can actually remember walking into the Food Network test kitchen the first day as an intern and 
everyone there is so sweet and so amazing, but not knowing that yet, I walked in and it's like these lights and, you know, this amazing kitchen and, and I'm going like, what the heck did I do? How did I get myself here? Um, but, you know, I have to say after meeting everyone and, you know, realizing all these people are here to really support you and, you know, they want you to do well, um, you know, it's like my Food Network family now, it feels like. And so it's it's really interesting how it goes from kind of this, you know, oh my gosh, do I belong here? Am I good enough? Um, you know, do I deserve to be here? All of those questions come into your mind. And I think, you know, one of the things that I would tell my past self is it's like, yes, for sure. You belong here. You studied, you went to school for it. You did all of these things. And, and um, I think, yeah, it's one of those things you just have to just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Like just take the leap, right? You can prepare and yeah. study and um, do so much learning and prepping, but like sometimes you just have to like jump and be be like, you know, I'm going to learn and it's going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to make it through. And um, like, now in your career like how do you feel when you like go into a test kitchen is it very natural is it very just like wow this is this is who I am you know yeah I, I think it definitely you know knowing the people that you're working with definitely helps having friendly faces and all of those things um, but yeah you build confidence like anything it's practice it's going in and doing it and doing a good job and being able to say last time I I had no issues, you know, this time it's going to be the same, or if there are issues, I'm going to overcome them and I'll figure it out, you know, when they arise. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely, you get more comfortable and you kind of, you know, trust in, in your ability a little bit more. So yeah, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And so I know, um, you focus a little bit more on like the raw, the, um, like the better for you, mm -hmm. um, that type of recipe so how did you um because when you studied it was probably like very traditional baking and stuff so how did you pivot from that and go into a more niche area of baking and um food for sure so i yes i studied very traditional all the croissants all the butter um which is is great um but i actually wound up finding out that i had some food sensitivities mm. in college um, and so because of that, and I also have family members who have some, you know, allergies, I kind of decided to take, you know, that skill set that I had learned in school, you know, I mean, it's a science, you know, baking is a science. So I think, um, that really is helpful when trying to create something that's allergy friendly, because there's lots of changes you need to make to the recipe. Um, and it can be quite challenging, which I love a good challenge. So it's kind of fits my personality of, okay, it's easy to make a croissant taste great with butter, but what if you take the butter out? Okay, what if you take the flour out or the gluten out? Um, so it's more so, so myself and my family members can enjoy it when we have get togethers. Um, and I think that, you know, now more than ever, people are kind of becoming more aware of what they're putting in their bodies, whether, you know, um, it's sugar or wheat or whatever it may be, um, you know, and obviously everyone should find something that works for them. Um, but this is kind of, you know, a little path that I found that I enjoy doing and, and my family benefits from it. <laughs> oh, I love it. And so like all of your recipes that you develop or recreate, they're all like raw, vegan, gluten-free, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, um, vary. Most of them are vegan and gluten-free. Um, some of them are just gluten-free, some of them are raw. So there's really something for everyone. Um, but yeah, I focus on, on all of that. And I try to take things that are childhood favorites, like a chocolate chip cookie. And I mean, you know this better than anyone, a good chocolate chip cookie. I mean, can't get any better than that. But um, so yeah, I, I like to focus on things that you know, you might miss, you know, if you have an allergy and, and you can't have it anymore, you know, what are those things, you know, is it a Snickers bar? Um, I just did a recreation of a Snickers bar because, you know, to me, those are things that people, um, people miss when, when their diets change for whatever reason. Super cool. Okay. So like, let's like pivot and talk about like the recipe development process. So like, if you're trying to, let's say, create a Snicker bar, how do you, how do you um, remaster that or what's your process like? I'm yeah, sorry. so I think, I mean, 
I'm always for, you know, you see what's out there, right? I mean, you want to be original when it comes to posting a, a recipe, of course, um, and make sure that it's yours, um, which in the recipe world, it's kind of a weird gray line between, you know, it's, it's hard to patent a recipe, um, but to try to be as unique um, and as original as you can be, you know, recreating something that may have already been done. You know, I like to see what's out there, what's on the web, um, and then see what I like about each one. You know, maybe I really like the oat crust on this one and I really like the vegan ganache from this one and what can I do to tweak them and maybe combine them into something totally different. Um, so I think utilizing the resources that are available to you, you know, there's no need to completely recreate, you know, um, unless you want to, which I do sometimes, but I would say I generally, um, you know, start from some sort of base recipe and then kind of pivot from there um, with multiple iterations, obviously, until you get to the final product, which is always the most rewarding because it takes time and effort. So yeah, it's fun when you, when you kind of nail it. It's great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like, it's actually really hard to patent a recipe unless you like invented something like Perfect. it's impossible. And even for like us developing our recipes for coconut whisk, we honestly started by just looking online and like seeing what was out there and then realizing that, oh, we can do this better. We can do that better. And like, I'm not going to use oats and bananas on my pancake, but I want to do something else. And so like, you yeah. have, to, I think it's so awesome. Like starting from just like what's out there, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and then just making it better. Um, and then, you know, just giving, you know, sh sharing that. So that's, super, sure. well, that's kind of your, um, creative process too. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it's fun to sometimes just wing it, but then, you know, I, I think you, ingredients are expensive. Your time is expensive and, you know, you just kind of throw things together. Sometimes you wind up, I mean, I wound up with brownies overflowing out of the pan in the oven and, you know, all of the, the crazy fails. I mean, they happen part of it but um but yeah no it's definitely worthwhile using using what's available to you for sure awesome yeah okay and this is kind of random but like do you like cooking better or baking like it, you know like are you specialty in one or the other yeah so i i went to school i did four years in pastry so i really specialize in all things sweet um it's always kind of been my passion um so whether it was breads or chocolates or sugar sculptures or cakes, whatever it was. Um, I've just always loved kind of the creative process and sort of the perfectionist aspect of it, because I would definitely say I'm, I lean in that direction um, with, with detail, but um, yeah, so I definitely love that. But I also, I mean, I do love to cook. I think it's really kind of a fun creative release a little bit. There's less, science and measuring more kind of taste as you go, um, which, which is fun. So I, I do both, but I would say my, uh, my strong suit is, is pastry. Oh, that is so cool. And like, you know, vegan gluten-free raw pastry, like that's the jam. So <laughs> I love <laughs> I <do>. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So my next question is how, um, so like if someone was starting out where you were, you know, years ago, um, like, what would your advice be for them, you know, if they wanted to, you know, do what you do? Yeah, so first, as I kind of mentioned earlier, I mean, use your network. If you went to a college or school that focused on, you know, pastry or cooking, or if it didn't, you know, you can still utilize your network. Um, you know, I think that LinkedIn is a great resource. You know, you can find people who are in industries that maybe you want to be in. Maybe you're not in the food industry at all. Um, and it's something that you want to do. I mean, I, I don't think we give people enough credit. I think most people are more than willing to kind of help and give advice if you ask for it, you know, and, and reach out. Um, and I think that can be, you know, super helpful in just kind of sending out an email or a message saying, hey, you know, I'm an accountant right now and I really want to be a food stylist. You know, how did you get into it? Where did you start? Um, you know, I love what you do. Um, if you ever need an assistant, let me know. I would love to just come stand by and watch the process, even if you're not getting paid, you know, to do that necessarily. Mm. Um, you know, kind of just getting that experience. Um, for me, I mean, the internship was really big. So if that's something that, you know, 
whether it's the school you went to or your network can kind of help you pivot into, that can be great. Um, but I would say, you know, networking is everything, you know, the chances of you potentially knowing someone who may know someone else, you know, that can help you. Um, but other than that, I mean, regardless, just to get into kind of food styling or recipe development and that sort of thing. I mean, follow lots of food accounts. I mean, my Instagram is all food. <laughs> you scroll through and it's literally just looks like a menu. Um, it's all food. And so, but you get a lot of inspiration from that. And I think you can see different styles that you like, you know, and um, I would say that that can be really helpful in just kind of giving you a visual. Um, and I would say like, just don't be afraid to start, you know, if you want to style your food and take a little bit more time to do that, do it and post it and don't overthink it. Because the thing is, it's never going to be perfect. Um, and I think if you wait until it's perfect to post it, you kind of miss out on that whole process and the learning process. And I also think it's really cool to be able to go back and look at, you know, your food posts from two years ago to where you are maybe now and go, wow, look how far I've come. You know, it, it the lighting is so much better. Um, you know, the drip is perfect on my cake now, whatever it is. Um, so I think that that's, you know, one of the things too, is just start somewhere, you know, just pick, pick a time and just start. That's probably the best advice I can give. <laughs> oh my God. And that's literally the advice I give for like anyone and everyone when they ask me, like, I really want to start a business. Like, how do I do it? I'm just like, honestly, just start where you, it feels good. Right. And so like, when we started two years ago, I just started posting like baking recipes and stuff and like vegan recipes. And I was like a, you know, food blogger in a sense. And then it just turned into this, this business eventually. And, and it's, a, it's really all about just like, um, sharing what you're working on, documenting the process and letting yourself like, you know, um, be consistent with it. And then things just start happening. For sure. And without fear of judgment, I think too, and without fear of worrying what other people think, you know, maybe someone isn't going to think your brownie looks the best, but you know, it's, it was your best that day. And again, it's, it's practice. It's like anything you do in life, it's practice and taking the time to do it. Um, instead of saying, no, I'm going to wait until, you know, I have the perfect camera and I have the perfect lighting. I use my iPhone for everything. You know, I mean, basic backdrops, you don't need anything crazy. I promise you. I mean, it's nice to have the bells and whistles, but you don't need it. Um, you get pretty good at, at figuring it out. So yeah. And not letting, yeah, not letting those things be the excuse of you not starting. Right. And exactly. like, and how you mentioned being like a perfectionist, like I bet that it took a lot of effort on your part to do some self work and be like, I just got to put it out there. So good for, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And I think it's cool because I do look back at my photos and go, oh, that, you know, isn't something I would necessarily be thrilled with now. Um, but at the time I was really proud of and, and it's worth putting out into the world, you know, and, and saying, hey, this is something that I am passionate about. For sure. And like you said, if it was the best for that day, then it's good enough. You know, exactly. That's a tweetable. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a tweetable. Um, okay. So, um, so, you know, just wrap up questions. What does your yeah. day look like? Um, you know, it's probably different each and every day, but like maybe the most usual days you have, like, what does that look like? Yeah. So it, it definitely varies. Um, I, again, as a freelancer, you kind of know what's getting, you know, going to get thrown your way. Um, but I would say, you know, if I'm recipe developing from home, you know, it'll start with some, you know, research on, you know, whatever recipe I may be trying to develop, um, you know, and then there will be shopping, I'll be ordering from home now the ingredients that I need um, to make whatever recipes I'm testing. Um, and then, you know, I'll go into testing them and taking notes kind of throughout the day as I'm making them. And then I will make them two to three times probably, you know, that day or within the time frame that I have. Um, if I'm working on set, I work as a stylist. I work as a culinary producer on, on television shows. Um, so food television shows, I should say, you know, not just any, any show it has to be food related, obviously, but, um, yeah, so it really varies depending on the show, but you really hit the ground running, which is something I, I love about the industry. 
Um, but we're the behind the scenes, you know, we're sourcing all of the food, you know, we're making sure that everything's there for a given episode or show, whatever it may be, you know, all of the behind the scenes, you know, things that need to happen in order to, you know, make the food look great and make sure everything's there. Um, you know, the, the culinary production team is kind of on it, which is cool. Um, so yeah, it really varies, but I would say that, you know, it's kind of fun not knowing what project is coming next. Yeah. Do you like travel a lot then, or is it all like in a headquarter based type of thing? Yeah, I will travel, um, you know, obviously with everything going on, travel a little bit, you know, less, um, but locations vary. So yeah, it, it really really just depends it could be anywhere <laughs> that is so cool like growing up I used to watch like Sandra Lee Rachel Ray like I would just like come out like come home after school and just like sit and watch hours of it and so that's so cool how like you you know you're in the team that kind of makes it all happen behind the scenes that's just incredible it's it's a lot of fun it's <laughs> one of those things that I grew up watching I can remember running home, you know, from soccer practice to the TV to watch Sweet Genius and, you know, just thinking how, how much fun it would be to be a chef and never really thinking about what goes on behind the scenes, you know, and, and so I think, um, I don't really know how I got here, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy I am here. So yeah. Amazing. And, okay. And, and so like, sorry this is like the last question about it. I'm geeking out so much oh good you like do you make the do you produce the recipes that the chef will um, show on camera like you guys are like you're inventing it or not inventing it but kind of um we're right? not inventing no we're not inventing um what the chefs will be doing it's just awesome. really you know making sure that everything is kind of in order and we're you know on set while things are happening um you know it's it depends on the show, but no, we're not, we're not necessarily like curating um, anything. The, the chefs are, are talent on the front end and we're kind of talent on the, on the back end, the, the, the hidden talent that help things, you know, things, things move forward, but yeah. Gotcha. That's, that's really cool. Um, okay. I love it. Um, last thing. Okay. So what are some future goals that you're working on and like, what are you excited about? um at the moment yeah so i mean i am focusing on you know my career mainly i would say um you know and um trying to produce more shows hopefully in the future um you know style more um you know as things hopefully continue to open back up and 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 go in a better direction um but i'm also you know in the meantime kind of working on my blog i'm trying to grow my instagram following um you know my blog following um and sharing more recipes with people um so yeah i would say focusing on my career but also focusing on on kind of that that side you know side project as as time allows for sure you always have to have a side project i feel like you know just something to feel yourself right while you're doing your work um, for sure. pay the bills <laughs> for sure for sure and I love what I do which makes it so much easier <laughs> oh yeah and it's so like in sync you know there's yeah it just blends very well together yeah um, uh, awesome okay so uh what is how can the audience support you um where can they find you you know all that good stuff yep so I'm at Shannon Fulner uh on Instagram so if you guys are interested in more healthy recipes. I mean, you get the mixes here, but I have some other recipes um, that I think go, you know, hand in hand with that type of baking. Um, but you can also subscribe to my blog. The link is in my bio on my Instagram. It's Shannon's Clean Sweets. And you can find all my yummy recipes there and kind of follow me along on Instagram as well. Recipes and kind of, you know, a little bit of a sneak peek into some of the things, you know, that I, that I do for work too. But um, I would say too, my, you know, DMs are always open for career questions, baking questions, or just, you know, positive messages. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always, you know, there for it. I, you know, have people who've helped me, you know, get to where I am and I'm so grateful. So if I can be that person for someone, you know, that's, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. And I just love your feed. It just always makes me hungry for something. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shannon. This was such a fun chat. And I feel like your career is just 
you know, the beginning, like you can take it so far and I hope your blog takes off too. And um, thank you. Same for your company. It's like a dream. Love your mixes. Uh, I don't feel like going crazy and recipe developing. I just throw a mug cake in and life is automatically better. (laughs) And you just call it a day, right? (laughs) Right. That's it. That's all I need. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Thank you, Shannon, so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.